You are welcome to a life-changing encounter with the Word of God, preached by Rev. Okobo Doku. Taught and trained to be a chemical engineer, Rev. Oko has from 1998 dedicated himself to pastoring the Young People's Churches of the Lighthouse Chapel International, which is now known as SAVED. He is based in the Kodesh, Accra, Ghana, the headquarters where SAVED gathers virtually hundreds of young people from all walks of life to enjoy easy to understand, easy to relate with preaching that is relevant. Rev. Oko travels the world holding programs for young people who experience the fresh breath of God's Spirit. His safe camps have churned out scores of young people with a fire for God and His work. Be blessed as you listen to God's Word as preached by His servant, Rev. Oko Bote Doku. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may please take your seats. Amen. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to Hallelujah. You want to put your hands together? I think it's a good, good place to. Amen. Amen. Before I move on, I just want to introduce. Hallelujah. Many branches have joined together to be here. And then, if I mention your branch, you get up and give us. A wave, hallelujah, to see Birmingham. Yeah, anybody from Birmingham, you want to stand up? Stand up and give up. Birmingham, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next, I want to see Croydon. 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 Next, I want to see Greenford. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Next, we want to see Leeds. Leeds, 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 Leeds. Oh, put your hands together for Leeds. Put your hands together. Welcome. Luton. Luton. Hallelujah. Next up, Milton. Milton, please, you want to put your hands together for me? Anyone put your hands together? North Kensington. North Kensington. Amen. Next, I want to welcome Nottingham. 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 Hallelujah. And then next up, Plesto. Plesto. And then Southampton. Southampton, Southampton. Hallelujah. Next, I want to welcome Tottenham. Did we see Tottenham? Hallelujah. Then Swiss. Cottage, Swiss Cottage, Swiss Cottage, Hallelujah. Ready? Ready. Yeah, we want to also Venezuela. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then last but not the. We want to welcome. Oh yes, last but before before last, Germany, 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 Hallelujah. And then last up, we want to welcome. Apathy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Here I would also want have somebody here. Have silence. Have somebody here who wants to say hello to us. Some of you may know him. Some of you know him. Friend. Hallelujah. I want us to put our hands together and welcome Pastor Ben John. Hello to Somebody scream! I can't hear you scream! Hallelujah! Put us together for Jesus! Wow! Wow! Somebody say, I love you, Jesus! Oh, he loves you too. Well, I'll bring you greetings from the Kodesh. J Church saved in Kodesh. They all bring you greetings and I'm here to really be blessed. Good to be back uh, to the UK after so many years. And it's good to see all of you all grown up. And I believe that we will not leave this place the same. Tell your neighbor that no sleeping. Be strong. Listen. And you'll be blessed. Amen. <laughs> oh, put your hands together for Pastor Ben. Put your hands together for Pastor Ben. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right now. <laughs> I want to welcome our own dear. In fact, before I say our own dear, I want to welcome Father. Hallelujah. Time. Uh, His effect in my life has to be my. He still had a point. He, I had to choose him as my father. With the with the thing for one minute, you stop. Scream till we say you should stop. Hallelujah! In charge of save. Ready? Yeah, yeah, ready? Yeah. He's a pa- saved. I can't. I can't. Have- <laughs> Hallelujah. The child of Saved International. You want to put your hands together and you want to scream and welcome Reverend Oko Botai Doku. think you're strong. (laughs) 
No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay. I will prove to you in the next few seconds that sit down and shut up. I mean it. Thank you. Well, it's a blessing to be here. I am blessed to this definitely is a different kind of camp <laughs> than I was in a few, but I'm so 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 so, so, so happy to be here with you guys. You guys are wonderful. Ah. <laughs> I haven't been too well for some weeks now, but because I love you, I, I, I'm here. Because I should be in bed now. And... <laughs> but it's a blessing, amen. And I know, how many of you know you'll be blessed by the time we leave this place? Listen, I didn't come here to joke. I didn't come here to play. I didn't come here to swing. I didn't come here to play karate. I came here to preach. So, I am going to preach. And when I preach, you will say, Preach, preacher. Preach, preacher. I didn't hear you. Preach, preacher. I didn't hear you. Preach, okay, I just heard you. Okay. Ah. Uh, Amen. Wow. Well, the theme for this camp, I hope you have your notebooks and your pens. <coughs> Thank you. Every year we have a theme. When we come for a camp, we have a theme. Amen. Like every movie has a title. You know? So that by the time you finish watching the movie, you remember what movie you watched. Who here has watched the movie before? Who never watched the movie before? You watched the movie? You want to wee wee? No, 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 don't wee wee. Who wants to wee wee? Okay. Everyone, everyone, go and wee wee. Wait. We'll go row by row. So I'm giving you guys a 10 minute break. Okay? Don't say yes. Okay, I, I changed my mind. Sit down, everyone. Listen. When I start preaching, I don't want anyone getting up. It disturbs me. And so when... That is why I want you to... Look, there's a, the boys' toilet is here and the girls' toilet is there. So I want all the guys to line up here. And all the girls, please sit down. I didn't say go. What are you guys? So all the guys who line up here, come. You'll be the last to go here. First time the corner. Here are you, Jason. Here are you. Listen, when I'm speaking, do not get up. It's rude. It's very impolite. Is that okay, Jason? Say you're sorry. Yes, and go and sit down. And don't laugh at him. You could be next. Okay? Thank you very much. So, please, teachers and those helping, could you get them to pee? And then I will start preaching. Thank you very much.
Don't lift your hand. I will not answer your question. Guys outside. Starting with him. And then girls also. Are we all here? Baba, why why is he at the back? There are lots of chairs in front. Uh, those are the back. Let's fill the chairs in front before we go to the back. There are some chairs to the to my left. Some seats to my left. If there's an empty chair uh, in front of you, in a row in front of you, please fill it. If there's an empty chair in a row in front of you, please fill it. Where's your Bible? Let's so hold it. You guys, you know what I like? Not like. Is everyone seated? Please, everyone seated. All right. Thank you. Saying, do you know what I love about being a Christian? Let me tell you. Now listen. Most young children spend their whole lives dreaming about what they will become. I want to become a mummy. Not me, you. <laughs> I want to become a policeman. Footballer. Dancer. Nurse. Bus driver. Jason, you want to become a bus driver. Fifi Fifi wants to become a bus driver You want to drive a coach It's okay I don't want, And I want to be somebody who will not hear your voice again <laughs> Yes Now listen The difference When you are in Christ Is this you don't have to spend your life dreaming of what you will become. Because in Christ you don't become, you are. You know a lot of young people, because we spend our, our lives dreaming of what we'll become, dreaming of what we'll become, we bring that same mind into church. And even though we are in church, we kind of feel that we're not yet Christians. We're not yet there. Is anybody following what I'm saying? No, but I have good news. The good news to me is this, that you don't need to wait to become. In Christ, you are. You're already. You don't need to wait till you're 18 to get a driver's license or you don't need to wait till you finish uni to get a job when you are a Christian all you need to be is you need to be and you are everybody say be and I am and then point to your name and say you are say in Christ, in Christ you, are. you are God in Christ, in Christ. I, am. I am true listen you guys stop coming to church imagining what you will become come to church knowing who you are can I have a young person who has a brain in the head you say, wow. 
Wow. I never thought of that. Ooh. I am. Someone say, I am. Say, I am. I am not becoming. I am. Once I am in Christ. I am. Listen, you know somebody who knew this. Anyway, tell your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And I'll show you something. What is 2 Corinthians? It's a new type of car. 2 Corinthians is a new type of car. <laughs> who here is four years old? Four. Oh, stop that, sweetheart. Is there any four year old here? Okay, it's four. And she is four. Anybody five? Five? Five, five, five. All right, that's nice. Six, six, let me see. Six, 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 seven, seven, seven. Hey, you're seven. Okay. Do you remember the day you came to my house and you tried to beat up my son? And I beat you up instead. That was fun. Joking, joking. Oh, what's your name again? Your name keeps slipping out of my ear. <laughs> fit, fit, fit. How's mommy? Daddy? Okay, wonderful. What age did I get to? Seven, eight? Eight, 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 eight. So I don't know. Eight? Shh, please. If you're eight and a half, you're still eight. Even if you're eight, 11 months, and 29 days, you're still eight. Tomorrow's my birthday. Tomorrow's not today. You're still eight. So let me see you. If you're eight. Okay. Nine. How many of you are nine? All right. All right. How many of you are ten? Wow. Ooh. Ooh. How many of you are eleven? Ew. You're eleven? You behave like a two-year-old. You didn't hear me. Should I say it again? Come. Come. Hey, don't joke with me. Never. Is that clear? He can't even choose his shoes. That was scary. <laughs> Second Corinthians five and seventeen. Are you there? Is your name Kevin? Are you there? Second Corinthians. It's in the New Testament. Hallelujah. J Church, are you with me? Listen, listen, what you're doing is one of the things I hate when I'm preaching and you're laughing. You look psycho. You look wacko. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Can somebody read it for me? I need. How old are you? Eight. No, not you. Me. Twelve. Okay, I didn't say twelve, did I? Oh, sorry, twelve. All right. Okay. Give me a second, please. I need some time to count. One, two, three. You're confusing me. Will you shut up for? (laughs) 
Hey, 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 okay. 13, any 13 year olds? Tracy, 14, any 14 year olds? No, okay. Who's 14? Okay, so 13. Listen, sit down. Listen, sit down. Only speak when I ask you to speak. Otherwise, you spend the rest of the time somewhere else. Okay, I have a lot of work to do. All right. Second Corinthians 5.17 says what? If you can read it, read it for me. Is anybody here who can read it? You want to try, sit down. All right, read it for me. It says... Therefore, no, she's reading it for me. Therefore, if any man be, be what? He, he what? He what? He will become. Are you looking into your Bible? It said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he, everyone say he is. Not he will become. Do you understand? Or one day will become. If any man be in Christ, he is. You see, what I want you guys to understand is that the fact that you are here, the fact that you have gathered today in a Christian camp, is because you are in Christ. And if you are in Christ, then you are. Not you will become. You see, the reason why I'm saying is that a lot of times when I'm speaking to children like you, I kind of get the feeling that you think, you think of Christianity in the future. But Christianity is not lived in the future. Christianity is lived now. There is no future. The only day we have is today. There is no future. If there is a future, then it is given as a gift from God. But the only day we really have need is today. And if you are serving God, then serve Him now. Or quit. And I don't care how old you are. How old are you? Four, five. Do you still drink breast milk? No. Good thing. I know somebody was drinking breast milk when he was six years old. His mommy sits down and he pulls the chair. Mommy, can I have some milk? I'm not joking. I'm not joking. It's not a joke. It's true. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm preaching. Now listen. How many of you know that listen, by four years you would have stopped drinking milk? from your mom's breast. That's what I mean. Like a baby. Now listen. Now listen. Now listen, please. Fifi, I don't like that at all. Please. Listen. Samuel in the Bible. His mother couldn't have a baby. And so she prayed to God and God gave her a baby. And Samuel's mother promised God that if I have this baby, immediately he stops to drink breast milk, I will bring him to the temple. So Samuel was like this. No laughter. When he was brought to the church, and dedicated to God. That's um, what am I saying? I'm saying you children should stop listening to the devil, stop listening to his lies, and stop listening to the lies that tell you that you are too small to serve God, and too young to understand things that have to do with God. And the brain of a child is supposed to be reserved for cartoons and video games. And comic books. No. At this age, Samuel was already in the temple. And you know where Samuel's bed was in the temple? It was not in Eli the priest's room. Samuel used to sleep by the altar. Sleep. Sleep. 
picture. I need a picture of this. Sit down. If you can't see, don't worry. We'll get a row by row. I want the picture first. <coughs> That's where Samuel used to sleep. By the altar. What am I saying? I am saying you are not too young, Jason, to fill your mind, your spirit, and your heart with God. God for you, Chloe, has not been reserved for the future. Baba, God for you is today and now. Is that Abna? I met a girl, she said she was called Abna, where is she? Is it you? Yeah. So why are you looking soft? You just told me your name, didn't you? Or you changed your name in the last five minutes. How many of you know that you are older than this guy? How many of you know that if this guy could spend his life in church and in the temple, then you are even too old? Let me see your hand. Oh, your hands are going down now. Okay. So you want to go and rot in hell. That's what you want to do. How many of you want to spend your lives today and now knowing and serving God? Let me see your hand. Yeah. So stop turning church into a playground. Stop turning church into a playground. Stop turning church into a playground. You are lucky I am not here. And you are lucky that I am not the one pastoring you every Sunday. There will be pepper in your bottles. Do you know bottles? Let me see all the 10 year olds. Stand up. Okay. Jason, stand up. What's your name, love? Pardon me? Andy. Stand up, Jason. The ladies can sit down. The ladies can sit down. Thank you so much, ten year old ladies. Now listen. Listen. How old was David when God used him? You don't know. You don't know. You don't know, and I have not asked you to speak. If you want to speak, lift your hand. I'll call you and put your hand on my mouth and just speak. Down. Okay, what we do now is that just, do you guys like mathematics? How many of you like mathematics? I love mathematics. I love, I love it. I love mathematics. Mathematics is the easiest subject in the world. I will say it again. Mathematics is the easiest subject in the world. I will say it again. Mathematics is the easiest subject in the world. I won't say that because I don't obey you. I obey God. Uh. Anyway, listen. What we do know is that Jesse had eight sons. Okay? Eight sons. And out of the eight sons, three of them, three, were old enough to go to war. Three of the eight sons were old enough to go to war. If three of the eight sons were old enough to go to war, how many sons were not old enough to go to war? Just lift up your hand and know if you spit out the answer, I'll spit on you. I'm joking. But if we don't, they are just little. Eight sons, three were old enough to go to war. How many were not old enough to go to war? What's your name? Yeah. I was going to say Akosia. Very good. Ajua. Yes, how many were not old enough? Five were not old enough. Okay. Okay. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. The six girls are the back up. Huh? All right. So line up here. From the tallest down. No, the tallest at the end and then it comes down this way. Stop tiptoeing. 
<laughs> All right. No. Back. Okay. Now, who are these? Who are these people? Okay, join. Join them. Take your hands out of your pocket. Thank you. And Jason, put it in. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Listen. One, two, three. We're old enough to go to war. In those days, if you were going to war, you needed to be 15. 15 and above. So, she was 15. Take your hands out of your pocket. Let's say, are you guys with me? I'm showing you something. I'm showing you something. I sh- First, I showed you Samuel. And I sh- I show you the- now, I'm going to show you somebody else after that. If he is 15, how old is she be? Or he, they are all brothers. Let's just say that they are all a year apart. It doesn't always happen like that, does it? But let's just say. How old? How old? 12, 11, 10. Do you know who this is? The Bible says, and David was the youngest. So, listen. I know a lot of times when you watch that mood, um, the Bible account of David and Goliath, you see David looking on, you know. David was at most 10 years old when God used him. David. How old are you? Two. <laughs> Twelve. Me, you're two years older than David when he killed Goliath. You know how you guys fight over ages? You're eleven. I'm ten. No, I'm ten and a half. No, I'm ten three quarters. No, I'm ten and Shh, don't talk. If you cannot do what David did when he was ten years old, don't talk. Stop arguing. Kevin, how old are you? Shut up. Don't even let me know. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. Come, Kevin. Come. That's David. David. And I'm Goliath. Come and beat me up. You know what that was? That was easy. Guys, listen, listen, listen. 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 And Jason, take your hands out of your pocket. Put your hands behind your back. That's it. So what? Outside. You're the first one to be sacked in this car. I'll tell you when to come back. What's your name again? That's true. Look at that, I forgot him. You're taking too long. Right. Will you behave? Will you? Come and sit down. That was easy. Listen, listen. You are not too young to know God. No one said amen. Fitz, you are not too young to know God. 
You guys know how to assemble transformers. Power Rangers. They buy toys for you. You can put the hand in the shoulder. Hand in the shoulder. Hand in the neck. In the waist. Neck. Transformers. <laughs> Pastor Gino, you dare not laugh. <laughs> you guys know how to do that, but you don't know how to. You don't know how to sing. Uh, you don't know how to, and I don't want to say what you don't know how to. Okay. Sit down. Five-year-olds are sleeping in the temple. Ten-year-olds are killing giants. Ten-year-olds are killing giants. You're going to be David. Amen. You will be David. You will. 12 year olds, me. It's your turn. Come. Kevin, come. Just me and then. Shh. I need three chairs. I need three chairs. No, just sit down, sit down. From the back, three chairs. Sit down. Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to the latest show on TV, The Temple Priest and the Twelve Year Olds. And on our show this evening, we have Rabbi Pharisee. Sadducee Oko and to ask questions this evening in this evening show I have two 12 year olds will you introduce yourselves to the people Richard Richard what Aye. Richard Aye. and I didn't, you, I didn't know you were that dumb. Kevin what? Unknown. Kevin unknown. Don't get smart with me. Okay. I take offense. Kevin what? Amun. 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 Oh, sorry. So his name is Kevin Amun. All right. So, Richard and Kevin... What topic from the Bible would you like us to discuss today? The books of the Bible. The books of the Bible. No, I want a topic. Let's talk about sanctification. Do you have any questions? No, no questions? What is it? You, you mean you... You... you, you uh, you, how old did you say you were? No, you're joking. You're three years, three months. You're 12. Yes. And you don't know sanctification. Okay, let me change the topic. Kevin, let's discuss the prophecies of Isaiah. Which of Isaiah's prophecies would you like us to discuss today? <laughs> I never had more boring guests in my studio since Jesus Christ passed through this place thousand years ago. And I know you guys don't get it. Baba, how old was Jesus when he went to the temple with his parents? He was 12. And what was he doing in the temple? Playing soccer. He was, get, he was getting a Coke from the dispenser. He was looking for crisps to chew. He was chasing people into the toilet. 
What? You guys watch what's happening here, please. You see, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, me, is because I am not a comedian. And what is this boy doing? <laughs> or you want to discuss with me the prophecies of Isaiah? <laughs> Listen. Listen. Jesus was 12. Have you got? 12. He went to church. I gave these guys two seconds. They couldn't even ask me one. Jesus was in the temple with the priests. For three days. Three days with the priests. Both hearing them and asking them questions. For a 12 year old, listen, because you guys didn't miss this. For a 12 year old, listen, to have enough or as many questions to ask a priest for them to speak for three days. Then it meant that he didn't start reading or knowing what was in the Bible when he was 12. Does that make sense? That means he started earlier than he was 12. And he knew. That is why the Bible says that as it was his custom, he went into the temple and he took out. We'll, we'll get into some of these things, but me, I want us to change the topic. I want to talk about the books of the Bible. It's too basic. It will take me five seconds to finish. I want a discussion that we'll be able to speak for three days. How about the laws of Moses? How about the miracles that God did through the hand of Moses? How about talking about the battles of Joshua? How about talking about the prophecies of Micah? Or Jonah? Or the prophecies of Habakkuk? Kevin, Christianity is not tomorrow. Christianity, J Church, is today. It's today. And the things that you guys need to know, if I were you, I would stop spending my brain power on watching cartoons that will add nothing to my life. And cartoon episodes that immediately you watch, you forget the next day. And you have to watch the rerun. All you watch, you're watching a, a cat chasing a mouse. You've been watching that uh, one cat chasing one mouse for the past seven years. Stop talking. Stop talking, otherwise I'll get mad, I'll put the microphone down and I'll go out of this place. I trust you. Can't get up the news. It's fiction. It's stupid. It doesn't make sense. When Jesus Christ has come, he's died on the cross for us. He has shown us the only way to God. Only way. Then we come to church and we turn church also into a playground. Not whilst I'm alive. No, 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 no. You know, I stopped. Not whilst. While the devil has opened his mouth like a crocodile. You guys, you, 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 you should stop joking, eh? Because the devil is not joking. He ain't joking. He doesn't care. He will bite you if he can. Yeah. If you don't believe me, go and ask Jesus. Jesus, who was the son of God, the miracle worker, his father had to run away. You know, run away. They had to hide him and pray that he would not open his mouth and cry because Satan, through Herod, had wanted to kill him. What can a two year old do to the world? You see, that is what we think. But a two year old can save the world. 
sure when you go to church, you ask yourself, so what? I'm four. What difference can I make? I'm five. I'm seven. What difference could I really make to this world? I came here to announce to you that if a five-year-old in the person of Samuel could make a difference, a ten-year-old in the person of David could make a difference, a twelve-year-old in the person of Jesus could make a difference, then you can also make a difference in this world. I'm surprised you're not clapping. And I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about now. Talking about now. I said, you know, I'm talking about now. The theme for this camp, thank you so much, 12 year olds. I'm sure the next time I call you will have enough to speak about for three days. Take your chest. The theme for this camp is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. All I have been talking about till now is just to explain to you that you are Christians. You are. You are. You are. You are not waiting to become. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is. If any man be in Christ, he is. If any man be in Christ, he is. Say, I am. Lift up your right hand and say, I am. Say, I am. Say, I am. Where's my Bible? It's in my hand. <laughs> I'm going to show you another one. I need your pink jacket. Roll it up into a ball for me. We rolled it up. I'm looking for a scripture. I want to find it in the next few seconds. Guess again. Who am I? Hannah, guess again. Who am I? No, lift up your hand if you want to answer and I'll call you. Yes, love. Mary. Someone said Mary. I said no. What's your name? Renee. Nice name. No, I asked you already. Yeah, are you? Hannah, no. Someone said Hannah. I said no. Yes, love. Elizabeth is correct. Clap for her. Alright, so if I'm Elizabeth, 
Who's the pink jacket? I don't know if you know, lift up your hands. If I'm Elizabeth, who's the pink jacket? No one on this side. Do you know, if I'm Elizabeth, who's the pink jacket? You don't know, do you? Moses! Try Muhammad. <laughs> if I'm Elizabeth, who's the pink jacket? Down the back. Down the back. I love the back. It works for me. It is down the back. Give me clap for my sister. So I'm Elizabeth. I need a picture, please. I don't get these kind of pictures often. No, let me put a microphone away. I can hide it behind the stomach. Did you get it? Did you get John? Okay, he got he got John. Listen. Luke 1 and 15. I'm now watching the Bible. Please, please explain to that gentleman that if he's going to sit in the front of my car, he needs to really control himself. Okay, thank you. Luke 1. You guys are not too young. You guys are not too young. I want to be able to come and I want to be able to spend time with you and speak to you like people, mature people who can take what I'm preaching. All I have done so far has been I church stuff. This is not J church. You are like babies. Yeah. Ask Pastor Ben. Pastor Ben is the pastor in charge of J church in, in the Kodesh in Ghana incarnation. Every day, he, every Sunday, he has two services. The first service, he has around 320 young people coming to the service. The second service, he has 350. So on a Sunday, he has about 700, 7 to 12 year old gathering. When he comes to church, all he does is stands at the back. The children lead prayer. The children lead praise and worship. The children play the instruments. The children, they, they fast. They do, and you, I come here and have to behave like a nurse, a kindergarten teacher. Because everything else, you want to be like mommy. Look at Whitney. Whitney stand up. She's dressed like a 17 year old. When she comes to church, she wants to behave like a two year old. Look at Faith. Stand up. He's standing. He's, come, come, come. I want to see your shoes and your socks. Look, he's, he's dressed up like a bank manager who's just come from work and taken off his tie. With a watch on. He has a watch on. Then we come to church and you want us to treat you like two year olds. It's a shame. It's a shame. You understand shame? Do your teachers in school teach you with a, 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 a cushion in the stomach? Do why have you made church like a, a clown circus? I have come here to preach. You either keep up with me or I don't come again. No, don't do, let them say. Don't you? You, have, you have your own kind of issues now. Look, wait down. Look down. 
What's your name, love? No, no, green and yellow. Tyree. Tariq. How do you spell your name? T. Slow down. T Y R E K. K. Tyreek. Yeah. Tyreeky. Tyreek. What does your name mean? What does your name mean? What does your name mean? What should you do? Would you like to find out? Please find out. Sit down. Sit down. Sorry? We are with you. Braids, ribbon, silver chain, butterfly belt, skinny jeans, white snow. This is not a baby. Is this a baby? So why do you want us to treat you like babies when we come to church? Why? I will not treat you like a baby. I will not. I will not. I will not treat you like a baby. Because you are not babies. And in the kingdom of God, really, there are no babies. Because I've shown you a five-year-old who heard God's voice before the prophet heard the voice. I showed you a ten-year-old who killed a lion and a bear by the name of the Lord, God of Israel. I showed you a twelve-year-old who could sit in the temple and discuss with Jesus for three days. And I'm about to show you a baby yet to be born. Yet to be born. To be born yet to be born and what was said about that baby can you read it for me Luke 1 and 15 <coughs> for what he will be great in the sight of the Lord he would drink what no wine no liquor uh -huh. and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his... Give me back my baby, please. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Nihilously. The Bible says that when he was in his mother's womb, that was when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. You have come out for the past 12 years. How much of the Holy Spirit do you have in you? The man was filled in the stomach. You come to church and want to treat you like babies. That's be joking. I should travel. I should travel from Ghana to this place. Do you know what it means to travel in an aeroplane for seven hours? To come and treat you like babies, not in, not on this soil, maybe somewhere else. Papa said, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that is what it is. Eh? For me, I don't live here. You guys, let me, let me tell you something because you don't. This doesn't count. Don't worry. This is just a first session. I'm going to warm up soon. I don't even know whether I should preach it to you guys. I don't know whether I should preach it to you guys. Listen, listen, oh, this is where I'm going to be my intro to an end. Listen, have you been listening? One lady asked Jesus about John the Baptist. 
And the Bible says that he told them that there is none greater of all that are born. There is none greater than John the Baptist. But do you know what he went on to say? He said, but the least in the kingdom is greater. Wait. The least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Do you know who the least in the kingdom are? It's us. Yeah. We are the least. And Jesus himself with his own, own mouth said that you guys, he actually had in mind that you would be greater than John the Baptist. Who said amen? Glory God bless you. You seem to be the only person following. You are supposed to be greater than what John the Baptist did. But I see the behavior. Or you don't see it. Father, thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. Filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. May you be filled with the Holy Ghost. May you be filled, Tyreek, with the Spirit of God. May the Spirit of God mean more to you than an earring on your left ear. You can't even say amen. You can't even say amen. When I talk about the Spirit of God, it means nothing to you. How old are you? 11. He already knows whether to wear an earring or not. Then he comes to church. Then he wants us to treat you like babies. He wants us to treat you like babies. No problem. We'll feed you to lions. Yeah. Oh, lion is not a problem. Lion, they eat babies. I don't know. If we are in a, in a, in a room and there's a baby here, and we are, lion, lion, and we start running out, who is the, who is the lion going to chew? I can't hear you guys. Oh, I, First Peter 5 8 says what? Oh, Holy Ghost, why are you taking me today? Why are you taking me today, Holy Spirit? I said, if we are in a room having a picnic or on the, on the park, in the park, having a picnic and you hear a lion he starts screaming and we run away. We're so scared. What happened? We left the baby. Who's the lion going to chew? Okay. First Peter 5 8. Ajua, what does it say? Be, be sober. I, I love this. Sober. Oh, continue. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. All right. Because your adversary, what? The devil is about like a what? A roaring lion. And what is he doing? Seeking whom he may devour. Let me tell you, it's not everyone that a lion can eat. And the devil moves around seeking whom he may devour. Because there are some he can chew and some he can't chew. And the ones he can chew are the babies. Unfortunately. But I have good news for you, Hezuba. If you want it. Do you want my good news? 
Are you sure? First Peter 2 2 is my good news. Tyreek, where is your Bible? Which branch are you from? A party. Powerful. First Peter, the same first Peter. When five eight, now just go a few pages back, backwards, you'll find first Peter one, two, and two. What's your name, love? Yeah. Marcelin. Marcelin. It's a French name. Are you French? No, you're not. Yes, Hezeba. Good news. Everyone say good news. Good news. Yes. What's the good news, love? We cannot hear you, sweetheart. Stand up and read out loud with some confidence. As newborn babies yeah. desire the sin, fear, yeah. milk of the word, that, that they may be that, thereby, that. that ye may grow thereby. As I'm sorry, Second Peter. God bless us. It is not. It's first. You see, sorry for confusing me. First Peter two two. Why did you say Second Peter two two? Which branch are you from? Milton Keynes. Okay, you were sent to come and confuse me. <laughs> Master, how old are you? Twelve. Wow. Do you enjoy being twelve? You have younger brothers, sisters. You're older than them. You have older brothers and sisters. The younger brothers and sisters. Oh, you're in the middle. Monkey in the middle, monkey in the middle. <laughs> I'm also in the middle, so I know what it's like. All right. As as newborn babies desire the sincere, sincere milk of the sincere milk of word, word of the word, that ye may grow thereby. As newborn babies, okay, fine. We're babies. Accepted. It's not my fault. Is it your fault that you're a baby? When you, be, when you are born, what can you do about being a baby? Nothing. But you can do something about growing from being a baby. No one said amen. amen. You can do something. Amen. You can do something. Amen. You see, because your physical age is different from your spiritual age. Your physical age depends on your date of birth. Marcelin, when were you born? Date of birth. 16th of March, what year? 1997, so you're 12. Good. Now, you want to be 13. What do you do? Write a letter to Gordon Brown. And tell Gordon Brown, that Gordon Brown, you know what? I'm tired of being 12. Tomorrow, I want to be 13. Is that clear? Okay, Gordon. Thank you. Speak to you later. Cheers. Is that what you do? What would that change? What would that change? Okay, Gordon Brown is too small. Let me write to the Queen. Dear Queen, Her Royal Majesty in high places in Buckingham Palace. I'm tired of being 12. My birthday is in March next year. But I want to be 13 now. Please, Queen, could you do something about it? Thank you. My name is Marceline. What do you think the Queen is going to do with the letter? She put it in the bin. Why? Because. Because. No, that's not the answer. Because. Come, love. Come tell the people. They don't know. You're smart. You're the smartest person here. Come and tell us. Because. Don't clap. Because, oh yeah, you can't clap. Yes, because she can't do anything about it. She can't. 
Okay, I know who to write to now. I'll write to Barack Obama. He seems to be a smart guy. How many of you know no one can do anything about it? You just have to do what? Wait. Do you want to hear some good news? Do you want to hear some good news? The good news is that when it comes to your physical age, you have to wait for the next year. But when it comes to your spiritual age, you don't need to wait. All you need to do is to drink. First Peter 2.2 2 says, as newborn babies, what's wrong? You want your mommy to stop crying. Stop crying. Hey, if you cry another tear, I'll put my microphone down and go back to Ghana. I promise you. Hey, everybody keep quiet. It's me and him. Don't worry. I'm here, okay? Anything you need, come and talk to me about it. But now we are listening to preaching. Is that clear? Okay. What's your name? This one? Adam. Adam. Adam or Adam? Adam. Don't cry, okay? Okay. I also want my mommy badly. Don't worry, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Marceline, let me cut a long story short. If you want to grow out of being a baby, Take your word. Read. As you're reading it, to your spirit it is milk. You drink, the more you drink, the faster you grow. It doesn't depend on time. It depends on how much of the word you can put into you. If you have word, you can grow. If you have no word, and just watch cartoons, you come to church and watch cartoons, you'll still be midgets. Do you know midgets? Yeah. Who's that? Who doesn't want to be a midget? Who said, I don't want to be a midget. You are behaving like a midget. Take your hands out of your sleeve and sit down like a real human being. Uh-huh. Because at first your hands were short like midget hands. Y- y- yeah? Uh, child soldier! Young people, listen. Jesus needs you guys to stop behaving like children. Start behaving like spiritual adults. Now listen. If you couldn't do it, I wouldn't say you could. I would be the meanest person to come and make you tell and try and tell you or make you feel that you can do something that you can't. Everything that I have spoken about for the past hour is something that you can do. No one said amen. I do listen. I need you guys to rise. I need you guys to rise. Because, listen, if you... No, not rise like stand up. Sit down. Come on. What school did you go to? Talking about rising up spiritually. Even your English is... is, Anyway. Adam, you okay? Okay? I I love you, okay? Okay. I need you guys to mature. I need you guys to mature. I need you guys to grow up. There's nothing you can do about your physical age. Baba, how old are you? You're nine. There's nothing you can do about it. You just have to wait for a year. You turn ten. When are you turning ten? First of June next year. There's nothing you can do about it. But there is something you can do about your spiritual age. 
I'm telling you. You cannot do anything about your physical age, but you can do something about your spiritual age. And that which you can do about your spiritual age is to take your Bible and begin to read it. And begin to read it. And begin to read it. And begin to have quiet time. And read and meditate. And listen to tapes. And surround yourself instead of surrounding yourself with Pokemon and, and SpongeBob and things. You rather surround yourself with God's word. And before you realize, you will be a 12 year old who is discussing the prophecies of Isaiah with the rabbi in the temple. Yeah. That is the kind of 12 year old I am looking for in my church. <clears throat> and you guys are no different. You are no different. You are no different. You can do it. I say you can do it. I say you can do it. If someone could do it, you can do it. If someone could do it, you can do it. If David could, you can. If John the Baptist could, you can. If Jesus could do it, you can do it. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 11. Let me just flow. Today is the first day. First night will be going on for a while. Okay. From which branch? Is your boy? Do you know him? read for me. If you can, lift up your hand. Read. I want someone who will read nicely and fluently. Yes, come and read for me. Ephesians 4 from verse 11. Ephesians. This one. Galatians Ephesians. Next time when you lift up your hand, try and find a verse before you lift it up. Okay. Very good. Ephesians 4 and 11. <clears throat> and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, into a perfect man, into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That, that we henceforth be no more children. Kevin, what are you looking at? No, 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 no. Don't listen. Look. Okay. Don't listen. Read. Okay. Okay. And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight by the snake of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to the sea. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the snake of men. That we henceforth no longer be what? Read it. That we henceforth no longer be what? Yeah. What does the 11 say? He says he gave and he gave unto some what? Apostles and what? And prophets and what? And what? Evangelists and what? Pastors. And teachers, and the next verse is what? 
for, for the perfecting of the saints. You see, the reason why I'm coming here is to perfect you. God has given saved J Church in the world, Reverend Oko, so that you will be perfected. What does it mean to perfect something? Perfect means that you are not perfect yet, but by the time I finish working on you, you will be more perfect than you were before. Can I have an amen from somebody? Yeah. For the perfecting of the saints, for the what? For the work of the ministry, 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The 13 says what? Till we all, let's read it together. Come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So God wants us to have, listen. <coughs> God wants us to have unity of faith. What does it mean? That means God wants us to have the same kind of faith. What does that mean? What that means is that God wants the faith in J Church in Ghana to be the same as the faith of J Church in the UK. So we all come to the unity of the faith. So that J Church US, same faith. J Church in Nigeria. Same faith. J Church Milton Kings. Same faith. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. That is God's intention. God's intention is that if we are saved, J Church, Lighthouse Chapel International, we should all believe the same things. Unity of the faith. What's the second one? No, 13. Yeah? Unity of the faith. And the second one is what? I, listen, look into your Bible. Second one is what? The knowledge. Ask yourself, faith, what do you know about Jesus? What do you know? Unity of the faith. Number two, knowledge of the Son of God. What do you know? See, that is why God has given you pastors. Not so that you can watch Dave and the giant pickle. And please, teachers and kids, I'm, 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 I'm announcing it here. I have banned vegetables in Lighthouse Chapel International Saint. If you go to church and they show you vegetables, my number is plus two three three two seven six two seven eight six two three. Send me a text and say our teacher is not preaching. She has put a video in and we are watching Dave and the Giant Pickle. You open your eyes and look at him. A bandit. And any such dilution of God's word, me, until you have taught them the knowledge of the Son of God. I don't want to curse somebody here. I don't want to curse. I don't want to curse. So you have taught them the word. So that what? After you have come to the unity of the faith and you have come to the knowledge of the Son of God, what's the other one? Unto a perfect man. Then what will happen? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness. Listen. J Church, who is your standard? Do you understand standard? Like if you are playing soccer, you want to be able to play like someone. If you are a striker, you want to be able to score goals like me. Now listen. In this church, our standard is Jesus Christ. Kevin, are you listening to me? That's why I took you, I took um, Richard and I sat you down. I said, you are 12. I said, Jesus was 12. Richard, are you okay? Mm -hmm. 
look something in or something. Are you sad? Ah, okay. I thought you were angry with me. No, no, no. My eyes are red. Or something else. Okay, that's how it is. Almost everybody's eyes are red, actually. <laughs> Almost everybody has red eyes. But the, but the, but the truth is that that says the truth is that I don't care. I don't care. The, you are, your eyes are very red. <laughs> you are your brother. <laughs> I don't care. I have not finished preaching at all. This is the introduction of the introduction. God has given you pastors so that you come to the unity of the faith. So that what? The knowledge of the Son of God. Then the third is the what? The measure of the fullness. Stature of the fullness of, of Christ. Listen, when you obtain these four things, it says that, that you no longer, what will happen is that you will no longer behave like a baby. You don't even need to be told, don't behave like a baby. Don't behave like a baby. When you achieve these four things, you, your church will stop looking like babies that have come together to play in a sand pit. May you guys grow up. Oh, if you don't say amen, I will not stop preaching. I said, may you guys grow up. The more you say amen, the more I'm encouraged to preach. May, may you guys grow up. What's your name? Nathan. Nathan? Nathan. Nathan. God, God bless you, Nathan. If you can see that. <coughs> Hallelujah. Somebody lift up your hand and say, I'm no longer a baby. Yeah, tell, to sit, lift up your right hand and say, I, I, I'm sorry, Lord. When I come to church. Oh, say it with all your heart. Say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Lift up your right hand and say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Every time I come to church. I, I behave like a baby. And I'm sorry. I'm going to grow up. I'm going to grow up. I'm going to grow up. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How are we going to grow up? How are we going to grow up? Somebody, I've already told you. I've already, yes, love. That's about how do we grow up? How are we going to grow up? How are we going to grow up spiritually? Yes, my love at the back. What's your name? LCS. By reading God's word. First Peter 2 2 says what? That he may what? That he may what? That he may what? That he may grow thereby. He may grow thereby. Drink the milk, you will grow. All right. All right. Psalm 1 verse 1. Hallelujah. Psalm 1, verse 1. Fifi, the word. How old are you now? Yeah. Eight, you're not too late. If you meditate, you will be great. Wow, it rhymes. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're such a polite boy. What's your name? Emmanuel from where? Milton Keynes. Ah, you're all from Milton Keynes. Ezra, where are you from? Oh. 
Which branch? Huh? Do I know her mother? Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. J Church. Three types of people you must not be around. Right? We are writing notes. We are writing notes. Three types of people. Let me put it this way. Three types of people that cannot be my friend. Three types of people that cannot be my friend. Three types of people that cannot be your friend. Psalm 1, verse 1. The first. Ungodly people. Ungodly. Ungodly people. If we say something is intentional and we say something is unintentional, what does it mean? What's the relationship between intentional and unintentional? Yes. No, no, what's the relation between the two words? Yes, Kevin, very smart boy, tell me. It's the opposite. Good. Important. Unimportant. What is the relationship between the two words? Yes, at the back, Abna. Rene. The opposite. Balanced. Unbalanced. What is the relationship between the two words? By now, everybody's hands should be up. I'm surprised. Uh. Yes, Vivi. The opposite. Godly. Ungodly. What is ungodly? Ajua. What is ungodly? What is ungodly? Oh, what is ungodly? The opposite of godly. So what is godly? This work was done badly. That means the work is what? It's bad. I don't know why he said this. Listen. An ungodly person is somebody who's not godly. An ungodly person is somebody who doesn't talk about God doesn't behave as if he knows God. And the Bible says you are blessed when you are not in the midst of somebody who doesn't have God. Not everybody should be your friend. Not everybody can be your friend. Don't choose friends on the basis of their clothes. Choose friends on the basis of whether they are godly or not. You have a friend, you talk with the person, person never talks about church, never talks about the Bible, never talks about God. And the person is your friend, you cannot be. Because, very good. Now listen. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So, what happens to the person 
Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Who are those the person who does walk in the counsel of the ungodly? Today we're dealing with opposites. Everybody say opposites. If you walk, if you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you are blessed. If you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, what are you? Cursed. Is anybody with me? Second group of people, nor stand up in the way of sinners. Sinners cannot be your friends. Number one, ungodly cannot, everybody write like this, an ungodly person cannot be my friend. One. Number two, a sinner cannot be my friend. Who is a sinner? Who is a sinner? Who is a footballer? Who is a footballer? Huh? Yes. Uh, you guys, I think we need to revise even your education system. Who is a footballer? I didn't say name of football. I said, who is a footballer? Someone who plays football. Who is a teacher? Somebody who teaches. Who is a singer? Who is a sinner? Yes, you have friends who sin. And you want to do well, you will never do well. They sin. They are liars. They are thieves, they are brawlers, they fight, fight with their parents. Oh, like you. That's why I'm teaching the Ten Commandments. By the time I finish this campaign, you'll be fried like an egg. Fried like an egg. If you survive this camp, you survive any camp. The heat will be up. I'll turn it up, bro. <laughs> a sinner cannot be your friend, Jason. The last scornful. Who are the scornful? Scornful are people who are always laughing at people. You cannot have a friend. Tyreek, are you writing notes? You better. Is that what? Number one. I said three types of people that cannot be your friends. Number one, who? Number one, what? Number two? Number three? Yeah. Okay. So now that you've gotten rid of ungodly people, you've gotten rid of sinners, and you've gotten rid of scornful people, your life is now empty. Most of the people in the world today are either sinners and God was gone for. So Baba, what do you do? What do you do? Yes, Muslim. You make friends with the opposite. Very smart. But the answer is in verse 2. And it says, His delight is where? Please look into your Bible. Look into your Bible. Psalm 1, verse 2. His delight is what? Is in the law of the Lord. What is the law of the Lord? The Bible. He loves it. He lo- Everybody hold your Bible go, Oh, I love my Bible. Shh. Now listen. If you, if you didn't mean it, it means you just lied. And if you just lied, liars, you know where they'll go to. Yes. But you know, do you know, is there anything that you didn't like before that at a point you started liking? Like, I don't really like tea. Drinking tea. Nah, I don't like drinking tea. But at the point in time, I started drinking tea. And I like it. Like, at the last couple, every night when I go back, I they make a cup of tea and some chocolate cookies. And I liked it. You know, at first I didn't like it, but now I do. Didn't like it at first, but now I do like a cup of, you know what I mean? You know, a bit of sugars. 
two sugars. Yeah. What am I saying, young people? I'm saying that I know you don't like it now, but trust me, if you give yourself to God's word, you will begin to like it. Yeah. His delight is in what? Oh, Psalm 1 verse 2. Jay said, Psalm 1 verse 2. Where's your Bible? Yeah, so read it. The verse 2 says what? His delight is in what? Marceline. His delight is in the what? He likes his Bible. I want to see a generation of JHS people who love their Bibles. Amen. Love their Bibles more than their PSPs. Because I know this boy loves his PSP. Has it changed? It hasn't changed. No, please let him answer for himself. If he lies, may I have one curse for liars? I say, if you lie, you will die. If you lie, you will die. Kevin, has it changed? A bit. Shame on you. So, it hasn't changed much. Okay. Now, if you see a PSP and you see a Bible, which are you like to do? Don't lie. Or from my preaching. Two or two weeks ago. Don't try and look good. Don't try and look good. We are all sinners saved by God. Yeah. But it's changing. See, it's changing. See, it's changing. Ah, your PSP can take music, can't it? We are preaching on it. On it. Why not? The Lord took you, but you can always buy one. If you really wanted it, if you had lost one of your things that you put in, wouldn't you find it? You wouldn't. You lost your memory states, so you, you, you can't use your PSP. Either you're a very foolish boy, or a very bad liar. Your answer sounds so stupid. I've never seen any stupidity at this level in my life. I think it's an extreme example of professional idiotism. Congratulations. <laughs> Such idiotic, nonsensical hypocrisy. <coughs> Listen, is anybody listening to me? Sit properly. Sit properly. And don't give me that face. I do not give me that face. Sit and smile. Everybody is a smiling face. Everybody is a smiling face. Hey, what's your name? Papa. Smiling face. Yeah. No, and don't cross your legs. Sit up. I'd rather go with two people to heaven who want to than 15 people who, go to, who don't want to. You think Jesus is begging you to come to heaven? Don't joke. If Jesus is come today, if you are not born again, he will leave you. Have you ever thought of it, Noah's Ark? When the flood came, where did the babies go? They think twice. When Noah's Ark, it was Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives. There, were no, there was no baby on the face of the earth. Don't joke with God. <laughs> when the flood came, where were the babies? They were under the water. Don't joke with God. He needs to kill you, he will. Yeah. So you better you better behave. And and if you love him, love him. If you will love him, love him. If you will not love him to don't distress anybody. Mm, this guy is spooky. Yeah, I'm spooky. I can't scare you. <laughs> I'd rather scare you into heaven than pamper you into hell. <laughs> but his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
his delight, what he loves doing, his, his Bible. No. You may think it is weird. I can, I can name 200 people today your age. If you give me time. Who loves God's word? And even younger than you. I know five-year-olds that when they are asleep, ching in their ears as they are sleeping. Yeah. So you, do, you, you sleep with your, your, your cartoon network on. I know people who sleep with preaching headphones. And darling, check is in the room as they are sleeping. The hill song you like, they wake up, when they wake up, they are singing a song there. And then they tell you, Daddy, last night I saw Jesus. And I said, I'm not surprised. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates. I can't hear you. He meditates. He meditates when? He meditates when? Listen, the meditating on the word in the day is called quiet time. I want to say quiet time. Quiet time. Every Christian is supposed to have a quiet time. How many want to mature? You want to grow as Christians? You want to grow? After all I said, and you should want to. The first key to maturing as a Christian, you'll be eight years old, but in the realm of the spirit, you'll be 15. How old are you now? You'll be five years old, but in the realm of the spirit, you'll be 17. Yeah. 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 I know a five year old. He plays drums as if he's 19. I cannot lie to you. If, if, I, I, if, I, if it was not true, I would say it. He plays just like a 19 year old. If a 19 year old plays and gets up, and the five year old sits down, is this, you will not know that somebody has even come to take over. May you mature. May you grow up. May you grow up. Papa, sit up properly. Remove your hand from your chin and smile. Don't shrug your shoulders. Smile. I'm not joking, no. I am not joking. together and let's welcome Pastor Ben. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody put your hands together for Reverend Oko. Amen. Everyone say, Reverend, we are maturing. Oh, say, Reverend, we are maturing. I can't hear you. Say, Reverend, we are maturing. Say it as loud as you can. Say, Reverend, we are maturing. Yeah. Powerful. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Meditating in the Word of God is having your quiet time. Do you all write it down? Okay. So there are 12 steps to having your quiet time. Okay. 12 ways. To having your quiet time. Just like you have 12 ways to eat a chicken. 12 ways to... To do what? To scrub what? To scrabble an egg. Step number one. Shake it. Step number two. Use the fork. Step number three. Spoon. Knife. Wooden spoon. Plastic spoon. Metal spoon. 12 ways to have your quiet time. 12, yes. Oh, yeah, 12 steps. Okay? Quiet time is where you meditate on the Word of God. Okay, so the first step is what? You get a Bible. 
you get a Bible. A B I B L E. Bible. You don't get mommy's Bible. You don't get daddy's Bible. You don't get big brother's Bible. You get your own Bible. Is your Bible yours? Can you underline it? So you get, you don't get a kid's Bible. No, you get a, a proper, a proper Bible. Like this one. Yeah, because we are all maturing. So you get a real proper Bible. Not color Bible with colors and all that. No, real Bible, black and white. That's a step of maturing. Can I have an amen? You get a Bible like new kind. The Bible should have, yeah, should have red, red letters. Like that. Whose who's, who's words are in red? Yeah. Moses? No, who? Jesus, yeah. So you get a real, real, real Bible. Not, okay, all your Bibles are very good. Not Bibles with colors and with, with, with pictures. So that a 19 year old can read your Bible will not find it boring. A 20 year old can read your Bible will not find it boring. A 70 year old, surprise, surprise, can read your Bible and will not find it boring. Amen. So you get a proper Bible and a Bible that you can underline and you can call yours. Amen. So get a Bible. The next thing that you need for your quiet time is to get a notebook. Get a notebook. Okay, I have a notebook. So normally you, you need, what I can advise is get a notebook for, you can get a notebook for church and also get a notebook specially for quiet times. Do you have that? No. So get a notebook, separate notebook for church, separate notebook. Do you write, how many of you do maths? You do English. What else do you do? French. Science and you do magic. Alright, so you, you realize that you have a notebook for maths, isn't it? And you have a notebook for what? For English. And you have a notebook for French. You have a notebook for science. For Japanese, for magic, for Arabic, or whatever you have. Okay, right. So in the same way. You should have a notebook for what? For church and for quiet time. So your, your, your notebook, your quiet time notebook has a date, you know, the date on, on, on your quiet time and it should follow. You should have every day have your quiet time. If your notebook has 365 pages, by 31st December of that year, it should be full. Wow. I know somebody 12 year old, 11 he had a notebook. Made sure the notebook was 365 pages. Yeah. 365. On 31st December 2008 walks up to me. Pastor Ben, have my quiet time for the year. Add whatever you can add to it. And let me have it by March. I'll tell you, it was, it was, it was, it was heavy. He reads the Bible and it was just beautiful. I wanted to bring it back for God. I, I, I realized that. 12, 12 year, 11 year old. He had his quiet time every single day without fail. Yeah, that's the level. Yeah. And he can talk to you for hours about the things of God. Yeah. That's the standard. JH, are you good? If I come next year around this time, would I, when I look at your quiet time book, would I be impressed? Are you sure? I don't believe you. Would I be impressed? Very good. Third thing you need for your quiet time. You need a pen. Eric, are you writing? What have you written? You've not written it. You've not written it. Your head like um, a coconut in, in a rabbit style. Your head like a uh, 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 yam that has not been cooked. Your head like coconut that has not. 
write it. First, you need a Bible, write it. To have your quiet time, you need a Bible. To have your quiet time, you need a notebook. To have your quiet time, you need a pen. Okay, so get a Bible. So just write, get a Bible. Just write, get a Bible. Get a Bible, get a notebook, get a pen. Has everybody written it? Papa, shh. Write it. Everybody should write it. A Bible, a notebook, and a pen. Get a Bible, get a Bible, get a Bible, get a notebook, get a pen. <laughs> Amen. Have you written it? Okay, one more. Very good. All right. So the fourth thing you need for your quiet time, to have a beautiful quiet time, is you need a devotional. Everyone say devotional. Who knows what a devotional is? She's got one. Have you got one? No, no, no. Not a devotional Bible. It's just a devotional. It's on its own. You've got one. Very good. Let me have a look. Very good. Very good. So that, that is the, that's a devotional. Very good. What a devotional does is it helps you. Should I tell you what a devotional does? It helps you to understand the Bible. Do you see? One of the things that helps me to eat my food is salt. How many of you would want me to give you rice or, or food without salt? How many of you like it? Food, there's no salt. It's just... You had it for lunch. <laughs> how many of you enjoyed it? How many of you enjoyed it? Aha, uh-huh. only a few people. But how many of you like your food with... A little salt and pepper. Yeah, it makes it very tasty, isn't it? Yeah. So what, what a devotional does is it makes, your, it makes the Bible tasty and delicious and what you would always want to read the Bible. Amen. So like her devotional has, oh, her devotional has a lot of pictures. Ooh, okay, but September 13th and then She's reading 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And so you write it down and all that. And then, you see, it tells you something. It says, when God calls you to do something, it means you are called to a higher level of accountability. It's a level. It's a, it, makes, it makes 2 Corinthians... Are you listening? It makes 2 Corinthians 4, 7 very, very interesting. Are, are you with me? It makes it interesting. It makes you. It makes you remember. How many of you when you eat a very nice food, you always remember it? Yeah, Chinese. How many of you remember the day you went to the Chinese restaurant and and you were eating as much as you can? Yeah, the devotional helps you to eat as much as you can. Amen. How many of you like spring rolls? Yeah. You guys have you have you eaten? Have they eaten? <laughs> amen. But that's what the devotional does. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have an amen? amen? That's what the devotional does. It helps you to enjoy the Bible. Amen. So everybody must, must have a devotional. And in Lighthouse, we have a very beautiful devotional that our own bishop has written. Where was it? One is in your room. Is it yours? Or is it daddy's? <laughs> Okay, so tell, tell daddy, I want a devotional. I want a devotional. I tell, own it yourself and write your name. Okay, and it will help you. Who's, who's is it? Very good. So you get a devotional. Yeah, this is another devotional. Uh, what are examples of devotionals? Our daily bread. So our daily bread is an example. Our daily bread is, a, is an example. So write it down. Examples of devotionals. Our daily bread. Okay. And then, and then what, what, what else? Which other one? Word for you today. Okay, you have word for you today. Okay, I'm not saying this one. 
That's really good, is it? Spiritual warfare. All right. So, and then you have Mount Mount Horeb. How many of you know about Mount Horeb? Yeah. When you go to Lighthouse bookshops, everywhere in your church, everywhere you see devotionals. If you don't have a devotional on Sunday, as soon as we get back to our various churches, walk straight to the bookshop. Tell mommy, I need to buy a devotional. I need to get a devotional because the devotional will help me enjoy what I read in the Bible. The devotional will help me enjoy what I read in the Bible. And the more I enjoy what I read in the Bible, the more I will delight the law of the Lord. And the more I delight in the law of the Lord, the more I become mature in Christianity and spirituality. Can I have an amen? amen. Yeah. And the devotional will help you to do that. Right. Number five. How many do you have? Four. Right. Number five. What do you do next? You say a prayer. All right. You say a prayer of thanksgiving. You say a prayer of thanksgiving. So you say a prayer. So the first prayer you say is a prayer of thanksgiving. Thanking God that he's giving you another opportunity to live. Amen. So you say so you say a prayer. And then underneath you, you write A. So 5A. A prayer of thanksgiving. Okay. And then 5B. The second prayer that you make or you say is you ask God to teach you from his word. Okay. So you say a prayer. That's number five. And that underneath it, A is... Okay, you're right. The A is a prayer of thanksgiving. And then the second prayer that you make under five... Okay, you got it all mixed up. We are still on five. So the devotional is four. This, this daily bread is four. It's not like devotional. So you say a prayer of thanksgiving. Papa, have you written it? It's a prayer of thanksgiving. Very good. And then the next prayer that you say is you ask God to teach you from his word. Amen. It is God's word. So the only person who can teach you is God himself. Amen. You ask God to teach me from your word and God will surely do that. How many of you know that God hears your prayer? Yeah. God will surely teach you. Let's look at Psalm. This is Psalm 100. No, Psalm 119 verse 18. Psalm 119 verse 18. Are you there? I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting. If you have to say amen. Tariq, are you there? Can you read it for us? Come and read it. Come, hurry up, come. Come, hurry up, hurry up. Run, 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 run. Psalm 119 verse 18. Very good. So 119 verse 18. You are telling God, God, open my big eyes that I may behold wonderful things from thy law. You're asking God to open your eyes so that you will see wonderful things. There are a lot of wonderful things in the Bible. Amen. And prayer will help you to see those wonderful things. Amen. So prayer, you pray asking God to teach you from his word. Amen. Ephesians 1.17 is also another scripture that you can use to do your quiet time and ask God to speak to you. Ephesians 1.17. Are you there? If you are there, say amen. If you are not there, say help me Jesus. 
Hey, are you all not there? Hey. Jesus will help you. Are you there? Ephesians. Ephesians 1, 17. Very quickly. You are there. Amen. If you are there, say amen. amen. So that means you are there. What does it say? Who can read it for me? Richard, read it for me. Ephesians 1. What does it say? Oh, you are not there. Uh-uh. 116, 117. Okay, let me read it. Let me read it. I'll read it. Ephesians 117. It says that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. So you are saying that you are telling God, God, this morning, as I have my quiet time, give me the spirit of wisdom. The spirit, what is the spirit of wisdom? The spirit of wisdom is, 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 is the ability to understand or to, to, to know something, to understand something, to be wise about something. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding. You are asking God, teach me, give me understanding even as I read my, or I have my quiet time. And God will answer it. Very good. How many do we have? What's the first one? Quiet time. What's the first one? Let's, everybody, what do you get? Number two, get a what? Number three, get a what? Number four, get a what? Very good. Number five, say a prayer. Number six, you look up the passage in your devotional. So for the day. So your devotional will have like a daily, um, sort of a daily passage. So if today is 21st and you did your quiet time today, you go to today's date and then you look up what the devotional says or the scripture that the devotional talks about. So you look up the passage in your devotional. You look up the passage in your devotional. So for example, if your devotional says Psalm 1 verse 1, you write the passage in your notebook. Alright? So you look up the devotional in your passage. You look up the devotional in your passage. Are you writing it down? You guys, you look up the devotional in... The passage in your devotional, sorry. Look up the passage in your devotional. Look up the passage in your devotional. You guys are doing very well. You're not writing. There's no book here. Say again. Look up the passage in your devotional. De- look up the passage in your devotional. Say it after me. No, you say it after me. Say it loud. I can't hear you. See, you weren't listening. You are thinking about what time we close. I said, look up the passage in your devotional. Say it. Look up the passage in your devotional, you, Papa. Say it, say it. I didn't say look up in your look up in your look up in your look up. I said look up the passage in your devotional. Come here. Come and, come and put your head onto my, my, my knuckles. Hurry up. Run, run. Run. I said, run. I said, hurry up. Hurry up and stop. And stop. And stop this hearing. And stop this hearing. <laughs> Say it again. I'm listening. Look up the passage in your devotional. Hurry up. Look up the passage in your devotional. Say it for everybody to hear. Go. Look up in the passage. Everybody put your hands together for him. Oh, is that how you clap for him? Say woo 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 woo. <laughs> Amen. So you look at the passage in your devotion now. Very good. Now everybody settle down, settle down, settle down. Alright? So that's number what? Number six. No, number six. Number seven, number seven, 
what you do is you read the passage slowly and thoroughly. Thank you. You read the passage slowly and thoroughly. Read it slowly and thoroughly. The best way to enjoy your meal is to eat it slowly and thoroughly. Have you realized that sometimes when you have the best chicken on your meat, you, you, you eat the chicken, the, you eat it slowly. And then somebody says, Ah, oh, you've not finished eating your food. I want some of your chicken. <laughs> Papa, write it, write it, write it in your notebook. Remove your notebook from your face. Eat, read, um, what did I say? Read the passage slowly and thoroughly. Thoroughly. Is it too big for you? Who can spell thoroughly? Spelling bee champions. Maybe, maybe, maybe um, scripture champions. I said, may you be scripture champions and not spelling bee champions. May you call scripture. So read the passage what slowly and thoroughly, thoroughly. Read the passage slowly and thoroughly. Number eight. Yeah, that's number seven. Number eight. No, no, still on the reader passage. Under, under, under number seven, we've not got to number eight yet. Under number seven, you ask yourself, ask of, so you write, ask yourself, what is this passage about? Yeah, I'm still on number seven. What is this passage about? No, actually, I think that's number eight. Yeah. I was just trying to see if the, you're asleep or you're awake. So that's number eight. Don't cancel it. Just write number eight next to it. Number eight. You ask, you ask yourself, what is the passage about? What is the passage about? What is the passage about? And then number nine. What is the passage about? And then you write the answer in your notebook. Number nine. What is the passage? So if I read John 3.16. How many of you know John 3.16? How many of you know um, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1? How many of you know Romans chapter 8 verse 1? What does it say? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Okay. So how many of you don't know it? How many of you don't know it? How do you know Romans chapter 1 verse 8? Okay. How do you know Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6? What does it say? Without faith it is, it is impossible to please God. Very good. So, alright. So, you read Hebrews 11 verse 1, which says what? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right. What, what, what does that passage talk about? What does that passage talk about? Oh, what? No, okay, everybody, what does it talk about? Faith. So you write, and then you, so you write the answer in your notebook that today's passage in my quiet time talking about faith. Am I getting to you? Tarek, stop it. Today's passage in today's passage in my devotional is talking about faith. What does John 3:16 talk about? Love. It talks about the love of God. So today's passage is talking about love. One of the one of one of the one of the guys I know, I'm a young guy, J Church. One of one of he, he said he read a passage in the Old Testament, which is a bit unusual in Daniel or something and he says on his notebook he wrote today's passage talks about the realities of heaven and the realities of hell the finality of heaven and the finality of hell well, how many of you won't want to read what his, what, what his passage is about it's very powerful he doesn't even use a devotional he's, he's matured out of a devotional he just opens the bible he has a, he has a bible that has a concordance he goes to his concordance and looks up hell and heaven. 
That's what he wants to do for his quiet time. And he writes, the realities of heaven. When I read his quiet time, I was like, wow. It's a level. And you can get to that level. Yeah. You can see somebody. And t- when I told him that, look, Charles, come and preach about the realities of the, the realities of heaven and the realities of hell. The finalities of hell and the finalities of of, of hell or whatever. Come and preach. He said, oh, Pastor, when I can preach, I need about two hours to preach it. I said, hey, I said, church is only 45 minutes. He said, it's a camp message. <laughs> but, but young people, I see you preaching. I said, I see you preaching. Chloe, I see you preaching. You stand behind the pulpit and preach. You can do that, can't you? Yeah. And translate. Wow, you already translate. Wow. So you can also do it. Kevin, you can preach in church. Amen. Yeah. The more you have your quiet time, the more you have the ability. Papa, you can preach. Do you want to preach? Do you want to preach? You don't want to preach. You will preach. Amen. Yeah. And you'll be a very good preacher. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Yeah. Do you want to preach? You'll be a good preacher. Amen. So what did I say before preachers came into the church? You write, the, what, what, what's the passage about you? Write, then the next question you ask yourself, so number what? Number 10. Nine, number nine, sorry, number nine. Okay, let's do number nine. Okay, so number 10, number 10, yeah. Number 10, you ask yourself, what, the next one, what have I, or what did I learn from this passage? The first one is, what is the passage about? So the passage could be about faith. The passage could be about heaven. The passage could be about hell. The passage could be about love. The next question is, what did I learn about this passage? So you then you write, I learned that faith, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Or I learned that faith is, is, is this, is something that I have not seen, but I've, I, if I believe God, I will get you know, you, you, if you read John 3.16, the passage is about love. He says, oh, I, I, I learned that God so loved me. And you put your name there. That I'm included in the people who God so loved that he gave his life for. Amen. And so because of that, I will not perish. Because I believe in him, I will go to heaven. That is what I learned from the passage. Amen. And you also write that, you write it down in your notes book. You write what you learned in your notebook. Okay, so underneath, what did I learn? Once you, you, you know what you learned, you write what you learned in your notebook. So when I pick your quiet time notebook, what I see is what you have learned from the passage. What I'll see is the passage. What I'll see is what the passage means. And then what I'll also see in your notebook is what you have learned from the passage. Is it clear? If I pick Neil Kine's notebook, I want to see the passage. Maybe John 3.16. I want to see what the passage is about. And I want to see what Neil Kine has learned from the passage. Hallelujah. Amen. Very good. Then the next one that we, we have there. So how many do you have? Eleven. No, it's el- it's okay, so what's the first one? What's the first one? Number two. Everybody, number two. Everybody, number three. Everybody, number three. Everybody, number four. Number five. Number 5A. Very good. Number 5B. A prayer what? Asking God to teach you from his word. Very good. Number 6. Very good. Number 7. Very good. Number 8. Number 9. Number nine, write the, write the answer 
Yes. Yes, so we've not gotten there. What's number nine? Very good. Number ten. What did I learn from the passage? Very good. Number eleven. So write it. What write what you learned? Yeah, in the, in, the, in your in your notebook again. Yeah. So you can do it eleven. Do it eleven B actually. So it's all it's all part of eleven. Okay. 11B, 10B. So we are on number 11. Yeah. So 10B, write, write what you've learned in your notebook. So 10B, underneath it. Just write. Papa, have you written it? Let me see. Number 9 is. What's number 9? What's number 9? Write the answer in your passage. You've written it out. Don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay. How many of you will have your quiet time tomorrow? Early morning. Very good. Follow these steps. Alright, so what number are we on? Number 11. Number 11. Number 11 is say a prayer. Number 11, say a prayer. What's number 10? Who can, who can help us? What's number 10? Number 10. Yes, number 10 is what did I learn from this passage? And then number 10, be write the answer in your notebook. Number 11 is say a word of prayer committing the day unto God's hands. Number 11. Richard, what's funny? What did he say? Huh? Come and come and come and give my my knuckles a headbutt. You, Kevin, hurry up. Give it an, a headbutt as if you are scoring for for us now. So yeah, so head it. One, two, or, or, or I'll bring the header to you. Oh, again, two goals, two goals. No, this is no. I, I want another goal. Uh-huh. Oh, you clap for the goal. Everybody who scores goal. Yeah, they use you. Yeah. Sure, I'll be for. Yeah. Number one, how many do we have? Eleven. What did I say? Say a prayer committing the day into God's hands. Say a prayer. Say, Jesus, God, I thank you for today, Sunday, Tuesday. I commit it into your hands. As I take the bus to school, protect me. Number 11 is what I just said. Say a prayer committing the day into God's hands. Say a prayer committing the day into God's hands. Say a prayer. Say, Father, even as I go to school, may all the bullies in my church or in my school be born again. In Jesus' name. (laughs) Say, as I take the bus, May somebody be nice to me in the bus. Committing the day into God's hands. Committing the day into God's hands. Say again. Jesus what? Jesus' hand. Yeah, yeah. All right. Number 12. The last one. Number 12. Everyone say the last one. The big one. The final one. The another word for last. The grand finale. The finisher. The ender. Right, the last one is you don't want to miss it. 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 Brush your teeth for five minutes. <laughs> Brush your teeth up, down, sideways, upside down. Pull out your tongue. Pull out your tongue. Diagonal and spit out, rinse, and then and then smell your breath. If it smells good, you come out. If it still doesn't smell good, you brush again. 
Or you use mouth. So the last point is brush your teeth. All right, let's go through it again from the very first stop. You guys have done well. Let's go. Number one, how to have your quiet time. Number one. Number one, get a what? Oh, somebody said get a storybook. Very good. Get a Bible. Number two. I can't hear you. Very good. Number three. A pen. Very good. Number four. Oh, now I can't hear you. Number four is what? Number five. Say a prayer. Very good. Number five A. Prayer of thanksgiving. Second prayer is what? What? What's second prayer? What's the second prayer? Keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. See. Should she score a goal? Okay. The second what's the second prayer? What's the second prayer? Ask God to teach you from his word. Number six. This is the most, this is one of the most important parts. At this point, your quiet time is becoming very serious. Look up the passage in your, in your devotional. Slowly and what? Thoroughly. Everyone says slowly. Everyone says slowly. I didn't say and thoroughly. I said everybody say slowly Slowly. and thoroughly. thoroughly. Read the Bible. Bible. Slowly Slowly. and thoroughly. thoroughly. Very good. What's the next point? So you ask yourself, what is this passage about? What is this passage about? Every, every time you... Tariq, Tariq, listen. Every time you hear or you read the Bible, always have this question in your mind. What is this passage about? Every time... Jecha, are you listening to me? Every time you read a passage, always ask yourself, what is this passage about? The moment you ask that question, because you said a prayer... That God should teach you and help you understand the Bible. He will bring the answer to your mind or to your heart. I thought somebody would say amen. Yeah. Have that question. What is this passage about? Right. And so the next one is what? You write the answer where? Write the answer in your notebook. Write the answer in your notebook. And that notebook, listen, J Church, that notebook will begin to become your preaching material. One day as you stand and you preach, you realize that you started preaching when you were age 12. You started preparing your messages when you were 9 years old. You started preparing your messages when you were 11 years old. Amen. Hallelujah. What's the next one? Write the answer in your notebook. Very good. And from there, where do we go? What did I learn from the passage? It's a very important point. What did I learn? 10A. What did I learn from the passage? Always ask yourself, what did I learn from the passage? Everybody, every passage has something to be learned from. You always have something to learn from every passage in the Bible. What do you learn from John 3.16? What do you learn from Hebrews 11.1? No, so that's the, what the passage is about. But what did you learn? What have you learned from that passage? To have faith. How do, how do you have faith? By believe. How do you believe? Hoping for things. Hope is believe. Believe is hope. So these are questions that you, st- you should, instead of thinking about uh, 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 PSP2, and thinking about the next cartoon and thinking about Hannah Montana's and all this rubbish, you start thinking about what is this passage about? Oh, I thought someone would say amen. amen. Instead of thinking about watching, what do you watch? What do you watch here? 
high school musical, Hannah Montana. It's all rubbish. I said it is all rubbish. Listen, 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 listen. Did Hannah Montana die for your sins? Listen. Listen. Did high school musical pay for your sins? When you stand before God and God asks you, what did you do with your life? Listen, I'm serious. And you tell God that all my life I've been following how Hannah Montana dresses, how, how as, everybody keep quiet, how Arsenal plays football. I said everybody, Kevin, if God asks you, what did you do with your life when you were young? Maybe should you, for God, God forbid, but should you die tomorrow and you go to heaven? And God says, wow, you are 12 years old. And Jesus says, wow, I, I was also 12 years old. So what did you do with your life when you were 12? Oh, Jesus, I was, I was watching and I was learning the, the, the Arsenal players. I knew about Ch- Ch- Fabregas. I knew about all these people. And Jesus says, wow, when I was 12, I knew about the prophecies in the Bible. When I was 12, I knew about Isaiah. How come we are so different? Instead of using your time and your intellect to learn and ask yourself, what have I learned from this passage? You are rather learning how Hannah Montana dresses and how the... the I, well, I'm, I'm not here, so I don't know. You should tell me what you, what you watch. That's why when I came in and I saw... What's your name? Ryan. Ryan, come. I saw Ryan. I was so happy. Ryan, go and play something on the keyboard for me. Yeah. Instead of you learning how to play keyboards to, to make your church something that it is not... You are wasting your time and playing around. Oh. Yeah, this is what you should be doing. Playing keep. Go and play, go and play the drums for me, S- Senna. Yeah. What chords are those? What chords? What are you playing? What song are you playing? The more I seek you. Yeah, he's playing. The more I seek you. He just learned it. Did you just learn it? Oh, you know it already. Oh, okay. Yeah. You should be doing mature stuff. And like Rebel Cross said, don't behave like children and babies. Doing mature, making sure that the, the service is working. I have nine-year-olds who speak in tongues. When they come, they start the service. They tell everybody, stand up and let's pray. Then they start speaking in tongues. Remama, Holy Ghost, we, we welcome you here. And when I come in with my suit and I'm coming to preach, there's an atmosphere. But when I come here, there's an atmosphere of playing. This is what you should be doing. I'm creating an atmosphere. Not just wasting your time about Hannah Montana and, 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 and Pokemon and all those things you want. And PSP too. Create and an, an, be mature and grow up. And the way to grow up, thank you very much guys. The way to grow up is okay. It's okay. Yeah, so when somebody is preaching and a person does this, it means stop. You are beginning to mature. <laughs> Amen. Instead of doing this and, and spending your energy and say, how can I learn the next instrument? I want to come here and see young people playing the trumpet, blowing it, playing the saxophone. And when, when somebody enters into the church, says, wow, wow, this is beautiful. Because you can do it. If the Jackson 5 can do it for, the, for, for whoever they did it for, you can do it for Jesus Christ. You didn't hear me. I said, if the Jackson 5 can do it when Michael Jackson could do it when he was young, you can also do it. You can sing and lead praise and worship. Wow. How many of you do praise and worship in your church? Yeah. The next session, I want to see a young person leading praise and worship. Amen. You should be asking yourself, what does this passage mean? What have I learned from this passage? What's the next one as we close? What's the next one? Say a prayer. Is it? 
No, say a prayer committing the day into your hand into the hands of God. Yeah. So, I just want to chip this in. So, listen, listen, listen. Wow, the number of times we've said listen. You I, are you do you have canes in your I have a cane in my church. Or oh, it's not allowed to. So, so, so you, you, you prefer it not being allowed, isn't it? It, it, it will make you go ahead and say it's allowed. Do you know what it will make you? If you don't, it will make you spoiled and it will make you, it will end you up in hell. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't like correction, I'll leave you. And one day you'll be found in hell, languishing in hell because you hated correction. And you didn't love it. And that's why when you guys like you can, you do anything that you want to do. One of the things I want to see, I want to tell you that prayer is something. Terrick, stop it. Prayer is something that you should do without stopping. Yeah. When you do your quiet time and you said a prayer, you don't stop. The prayer doesn't stop there. Whilst you are in school, you are moving around, playing, you are always in touch with God. You are always saying a prayer. If you are given a, a, a work to do or you, you enter into your classroom, the first thing to do is, Father, thank you. As I come to the classroom, give me understanding. May I understand math in Jesus' name. Amen. And you sit down. The master teacher starts. As soon as he finishes, Father, thank you for helping me to understand arithmetic. Help me for helping me. Help, thank you for helping me to understand what the teacher taught. May I never forget it so that I'll do well in exam. Amen. Every step you are praying. Jesus, I don't know how to write well. Help me. Help me. Teach me how to write like others. May I be good at school. You are always praying. The Bible says pray without stopping. Amen. Yeah. Pray, new kind, pray without stopping. You are going to eat. Because I've seen people who have eaten and they've had stomach problems before. You're going to eat. They've given you, what do you eat in school? Beggar chips. You say a prayer. Father, sanctify this prayer as this food. May it may be whole. May every gem die in Jesus' name. And you eat it. Say again. You pray in Greek. What? Why? No, but you're not a Greek. I'm not saying... Your, your school prayer, your personal prayer. I'm not talking about your school, I'm talking about your personal. Do you personally pray in Greek? No, so you pray in your that prayer that you understand. How many of you speak in tongues here? How many of you speak in tongues? Wow, yeah, so so it's easy. As when I was young, or when I when, when I was going to school, when I was here, every time on my way to school, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in tongues. Father, even as I board this train, let no suicide bomber sit in the train with me. In the name of Jesus, I bind every work of the enemy. In the name of he who died and rose again. Say a prayer and keep saying that prayer until the next day when you do your quiet time. Until the another day when you do your quiet time, you're always praying. The Bible says, pray without stopping. That is the standard. And it's my prayer that young people, J Church, are you listening? You will rise up. You will rise up and become soldiers and Christians. So you're going to have your quiet time tomorrow. I believe you enjoy your quiet time. You do you learn something and apply all these things. And tomorrow, maybe the la- last one, the 13th one, write it down. Is that learn how to preach your quiet time. Learn how to preach your quiet time. And so tomorrow I'll give some of you, or some of you will be given the opportunity to share your quiet time. And then we'll go home. Put your hands together as we welcome Pastor D to give us some few ground rules. And oh, put your hands together for him. Put your hands together for Jesus and for Pastor D. <laughs>